organic food is actually about the planet and about any filters between what we eat and what we choose to eat are a good thing. Do you know what I mean? So if you're thinking about how food is grown and how it's delivered to you on a plate, then it just makes you generally more aware of what you're eating, why you're eating it, and also you have a higher expectation of flavour. And that's kind of where organic food seems to do very well because it tastes great. And have you always eaten organic food and celebrated organic food, or is it a reason? I eat it as much as I can, you know, and it's difficult working in food uh, and kind of, you know, reviewing food and kind of travelling around the world and eating food and writing about food. It's difficult to maintain 100% organic. Um, but I think what organic has done is a trickle-down theory, effectively, of, of uh, food provenance. Now that we have organic well established as a food type, um, people are interested in the levels below it, you know, kind of quality assured, mm -hmm. uh, free range, um, and all, all these, you know, badge schemes that are actually really quite good because it shows producers have put some thought into the food they produce. Mm -hmm. and. It's easier to go from some thought to more thought than no thought to some thought. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? Well, I mean, organic food had great momentum until the credit crunch, to be honest. And a lot of, you know, the economy of organic production is they're generally quite small producers. And therefore, the ripples for the multinational are, are waves for the organic producer. Uh, and also, you know, undeniably, when people's pockets get hit by uh, fiscal change, the mm -hmm. first thing they're going to go is downgrade their organic diet, which is such a false economy actually, because coming out of this, hopefully we'll have learned a lot about our world and we'll have learned that the kind of capitalist model we operate on, um, I'm turning to Ben Elton now, back in the 80s, but the capitalist model we operate on is unsustainable for the planet and for our, our national economies and our global economy. Mm -hmm. And part of that ought to be a way of, you know, looking, re-looking at the food we eat, the food we grow, uh, how we eat, why we eat, you know. Because um, mm. I'm a firm believer, I love meat, I'm absolute carnivore. But I, I think if you eat eat if you eat meat three times a week rather than five times a week, spend the spend the difference in money on just better quality meat. Because mm. then, you know, it will change your life, it's better for you. You know, it just it's a no brainer really. Do you want to you know, if you're you know, if you're going out for a beer, you wouldn't want a beer pumped full of antibiotics. So why do you want to eat chicken that's pumped full of antibiotics? You know, people gather round real ale clubs, drinking amazing ales that have been made by, you know, blokes called Trevor and Nuneaton. You know, why should we be any different about our food, you know? You should know the name of the man or the woman that sells you your meat and veg. You should know that, because they're one of the most important people in your life. What do you think needs to change for us to be better connected with? <clears throat> you know, we're still very much, you know, we're not even on page one. We haven't even worked our way through the introduction to the problem. Uh, we produce... I mean, it's insanity that America wastes more food than some countries consume. Um, we need to break that link. We need to, you know, we we need we wouldn't need genetically modified crops if we simply grew enough food to feed everyone. You know, a compelling argument made for GM is that it will help feed the people of Africa and subcontinent continental India, those that are going without. But actually, I would imagine there's enough food wasted in the West to feed developing countries. Um, I just think we need to, to really get back to basics, you know, I mean, it's a no-brainer. Buy local, rem you know, we've got seasons, let's try and eat by the seasons, let's, you know, let's start respecting the earth a little bit and eating what the earth produces for us when it produces it. It's interesting, I mean, you know, we kind of, we do very much on the, the hierarchy of food, the organic at the, the very top of the pyramid. But actually, you know, I was in India over Christmas doing some food writing. And there's nothing more organic than a farm, you know, eating sarg, eating spinach from my grandfather's land. You know, there are no artificial pesticides and the like. It's grown, the butter's freshly churned from milk, from cows that eat normal food. I mean, organic is the way we're meant to be. It's not some lifestyle choice. Everything we've done between industrialization and now is a lifestyle choice. Organic's the right way to be. And we need to make that word, we need to democratise the word, you know. Mm. Like grow your own veg, do you know what I mean? You've got a vegetable patch, grow your veg, that's organic. You're telling me that's expensive? You're telling me that doesn't taste good? Nothing tastes better than the taste of your own toil. It would be a lie to say I was optimistic about the future of the planet at all. Um, I'm afraid to say there's a big problem with the things we've blown up already and we're um, 
rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. Um, I do think increasingly as people, I mean I think the most compelling argument about organic food is the taste. Okay, that's, that's the only thing. If you do a side-by-side -side taste test, organic will win 99 times out of 100. So let, let taste decide. You know, let your mouth and your stomach and your heart tell you and forget about your mind.